Hello there guys, Billabo10000 here, bringing you another history video for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. If you haven't checked out my history video on Verge Ben and Laws 18, I'd highly recommend it. You can check the video out in the top right corner. And before we begin, I'd just like to remind everyone watching that there is a Nintendo gift card giveaway that is open for entrance up until the 1st of September to celebrate me hitting 10,000 subscribers. If you live in the USA, UK, or Europe, you can enter as I can only purchase gift cards using the currencies of those countries. You can find more information in the description below. Anyway, today's subject matter is a highly popular character within the current speculation scene. Today, we're going to be discussing The Legend of Zelda's Skull Kid. Some quick background info on Skull Kid and his current history. He is the main antagonist of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and has been playable in Hyrule Warriors, showcasing dark powers. He appeared in Smash 4 as an assist trophy, and so far, has not been seen for Smash Ultimate. Skull Kid first rose to prominence after leaker Loz18 suggested that he was coming to the game after the main Smash Direct on the 8th of August 2018. Loz18 at the same time was at the center of speculation for various reasons, which meant everyone latched on to what he claimed and thus Skull Kid was brought into the public eye. You can check out my video on that topic in the top right corner. Some are taking Loz's words as gospel, citing he predicted both the E3 Direct and the Smash Direct, but if you watch my history video on his leaks, you'll see that he didn't predict the Smash Direct quite as well as people have been saying, but he did follow me on Twitter, so he can't be all that bad. Loz18 went on to close his GameFAQs account soon after, then having a similar experience in Twitter where he apparently leaked Isaac from Golden Sun before having to close his account. Nobody got a picture of the tweet, but there's a GameFAQs post with the transcript, which you can see here. I think it's a bit suspicious that he keeps leaking characters and then deleting his accounts, but whatever. Back to Skull Kid himself. Now, I couldn't pinpoint exactly who the first person to come up with this theory was, but I will credit Relax Alex for really getting this theory out there, and many of you watching this know exactly what I'm about to discuss. Yes? It's time to discuss the background of Sakurai's segments during the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Direct on August the 8th, 2018. Now, everyone first got to discussing the background of these segments when they noticed that there were two different colored chairs to the right of Sakurai, a yellow chair and a purple chair. Some jumped at the chance to say that this was Waluigi's color scheme, which is how I first heard about it but some eagle-eyed theorists believe that this is not a reference to the long dead assist trophy, but instead a reference to our very own Skull Kid. Let me paint a picture for you. The yellow chair represents Tattle, the main fairy that travels with Link during his adventure in Termina. The purple chair represents Tail, the fairy that is trapped with Skull Kid throughout the game, whom Tattle's goal is to rescue. And then if you look at the sofa to Sakurai's left, look at the shade of green. It's the perfect shade of green to match some of Skull Kid's clothing, while the pillows match up perfectly with Skull Kid's face and upper body color scheme. Is this a coincidence? Well... In the E3 2018 Direct, Sakurai had some live segments there as well where he spoke to us, the viewers, and with the reveal of King K. Rule at the end of the 8th of August Direct, people noticed that the clues were there all along. Aside from the main color scheme being a dark brown, he had a barrel, a rope ladder, and at a stretch, a tropical looking plant in the background, which many are citing as spoilers for King K. Rule as they reference the Donkey Kong franchise. Originally, I felt this theory had no merit and was just a coincidence, but then I realized a very simple something. If these weren't clues, why would Sakurai keep changing the area where he films each live segment for the directs? It would make sense to be consistent and stick to a specific place, but because he keeps changing up where he's sitting, it feels more deliberate to the viewer. 
Now, a user by the name of Chance 25 over on Twitter sent Relaxalax a handy picture of Skull Kid clues for Smash Ultimate, which I'd like to dissect. But firstly, the picture was only part of a comment chain where Twitter user Jubes the Dude pointed out that the Zelda franchise has at least three hidden music tracks we don't know about, courtesy of the Direct. Could this mean that one of those tracks is Skull Kid's theme? Could we even be getting a new Zelda stage for this music to play on? Anyway, aside from the information we've already covered, such as the chairs and Laws' prediction, we also have a few more points that this picture mentions. Firstly, the moon is already an assist trophy for this game and represents Majora's Mask well enough. Traditionally, at least in Smash 4, Zelda only had one assist per Zelda game to represent them, Midna being Twilight Princess, Skull Kid being Majora's Mask, Tingle appearing in his Wind Waker incarnation, and Girahim representing Skyward Sword. Which would mean Skull Kid couldn't be the Majora's Mask assist trophy for Smash 5 if this is the case. However, this is not proven to be a factual, conclusive piece of evidence, because we don't actually know how Sakurai handles assist trophies. Further down, while Skull Kid himself wasn't a costume in Smash 4, Majora's Mask was, and many believe that the Mi costumes represent content that could be coming to Ultimate. However, with Ashley, Zero, and Knuckles all being relegated to assist trophy, I feel this point doesn't hold as much merit, as many of the costumes were just really nice references to third-party companies that were paired up with Nintendo at the time. Further up, Young Link was brought up due to his final Smash still being hidden from us, the viewers. Many are speculating it to be something to do with Majora's Mask, mainly the Fierce Deity Mask, which could make for an exciting spectacle. Are they holding off on this reveal until we can get Skull Kid shown? Majora's Mask 3D also happened to come out on the same year as the Smash Ballot, which meant Skull Kid would be in the public eye. However, a spreadsheet that covers quite a large portion of the community managed the exit polls during the ballot period, and Skull Kid didn't do very well. And we can see that many of the newcomers appearing in this game did exceptionally well in these polls. It's not a coincidence. If this game truly is ballot-based like it seems to be, Skull Kid may not be making the jump to playable. However, this picture does make a false assumption that the final roster was decided in 2015. That is incorrect. It was only the first project plan that was decided in December of 2015, which may not have included the final roster. We can assume, however, that the roster was decided before mid-2016, as game development needed to start at that point. Below this, the picture mentions a Heroes vs. Villains theme. However, many are now speculating this information to have been relevant only to King K. Rule's reveal trailer, as it played a major part in the marketing for that specific reveal. It's no secret that some of the fan base's biggest wants are villains, because Nintendo's been so stingy with them in the past. And lastly, to the right of the picture, there are two points that I don't feel are too important. The first is the Skull Kid reveal for Smash 4, where Sakurai had to ensure people that he wasn't a character, as he knew his popularity. However, that was Smash 4, it's been quite a few years since then. As for the other picture, the Ramblin' Evil Mushroom from Smash 5 uses a similar effect to Skull Kid's old assist trophy but we know that the assist trophies can exist with items that use the same effect, like Shadow and the Timer item, so it's not a concrete theory. Some of these points are good, some are just grasping for straws, but the message is clear. Skull Kid is possible. And just recently, Skull Kid got another hint as Reggie had a Skull Kid figure on his desk during the Diablo 3 reveal trailer. Whether this was intentional in regards to Smash, or just a Zelda decoration due to the Ganondorf content being added to the game, it still gives credence to the theories people have. Overall, I can't help but feel that Skull Kid feels a bit like a bandwagon character, someone who has shown up overnight, who wasn't even in the speculation scene prior to this aside from being a missing assist trophy, and I'm honestly leaning more towards Skull Kid showing up as a boss as opposed to a character. 
That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if he did get announced as a fully blown character, but my gut is really telling me he'll be a boss, and I like to follow my gut. So, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more Smash content, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye. Hey there guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Patreons down below, they are all awesome, they help me out every day. And if you guys want to become a Patreon, take a look in the description down below for a link to my Patreon page. Thank you very much for watching guys, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.